well good wednesday morning to you folks hopefully things are going well with you i hope you had a good night's rest and you are ready to face the day i read to you a little devotion from this max Lucado book a week and a half ago or so no wonder they call him the savior i'm going to read to you uh chapter 22 of this little book open arms they aren't exactly what you'd call a list of who's who in purity and sainthood. In fact, some of their antics and attitudes would make you think of the Saturday night crowd at the county jail. What few halos there are among this befuddled bunch could possibly use a bit of straightening and polish. Yet, strange as it may seem, it is this very humanness that makes these people refreshing. They are so refreshing that should you ever need a reminder of God's tolerance, you'd find it in these people. If you ever wonder how in the world God could use you to change the world, look at these people. What people? The people God used to change history. A rag bag of ne'er-do-wells and has-beens who found hope not in their performance, but in God's proverbial open arms. Let's start with Abraham. Though eulogized by Paul for his faith, his father of a nation, this father of a nation wasn't um, without his weakness. He had a fibbing tongue that wouldn't stop. One time, in order to save his neck, he let the word get out that Sarah wasn't his wife, but his sister, which was only half true. And then, not long after, he did it again. And there Abraham said of his wife Sarah, she is my sister. Twice he traded in his integrity for security. And that's what you call confidence in God's promises. <laughs> can you build a nation on that kind of faith? God can. God took what was good and forgave what was bad and used old forked tongue to start a nation. Another household name is Moses, definitely one of the history's greatest. But until he was 80 years old, he looked like he wouldn't matter or amount to much more than a once upon a time prince turned outlaw. Would you choose a wanted murderer to lead a nation out of bondage? Would you call upon a figurative, a fugitive, to carry the Ten Commandments? God did. And he called him in all the places right out of the sheep pasture. God called his name through a burning bush. Sacred old Moses right out of his shoes. <laughs> and there with knees knocking and a who me. Written all over his face, Moses agreed to go back into the ring. And what can you say about a fellow who, whose lust got so lusty that he got a woman pregnant, tried to blame it on her husband, and had her husband killed, and then went on living like nothing ever happened? Well, you could say he was a man after God's own heart. David's track record left him little to be desired, but his repentant spirit was unquestionable. Then comes Jonah, God's ambassador to Nineveh. Jonah, however, had other ideas. He had no desire to go and to cry out to that heathen city. So he hopped on the other boat while God wasn't looking, or at least that's what Jonah thought. God put him in a whale's belly to bring him back to his senses. But even the whale couldn't stomach this missionary for too long. A good bump and Jonah went flying over the surf and landed big-eyed and repentant on the beach. Which just goes to show that you can't keep a good man down. And on and on the story goes. Elijah, the prophet, pouted. Solomon, the king who knew too much. Jacob, the wheeler dealer. Gomer, the prostitute. Sarah, the woman who giggled at God. One story after another of God using man's best and overcoming man's worst. Even the geology of Jesus is salted with a dubious character or two. Tamar, the adulteress. Rahab, the harlot. 
Bathsheba who tended to take baths in questionable locations. The reassuring lesson is clear. God used and uses people to change the world. People, not saints or superheroes or geniuses, but people. Crooks, creeps, lovers, and liars. He uses them all. And what? What they may lack in perfection, God makes up for in love. <laughs> Jesus later summarized God's stubborn love with a parable he told of a teenager who decided that life at the farm was too slow for his taste. So with pockets full of inheritance money, he set out to find the big time. What he found instead were hangovers, fair weather friends, and a long unemployment line. When he had just about enough of the pig's life as he could take it, he swallowed his pride, dug his hands deep into his empty pockets, and began to walk the long walk home, all the while rehearsing the speech that he had planned to give to his father. He never used it. Just when he got to the top of the hill, his father would have been waiting at the gate. He saw him. The boy's words of apology were quickly muffled by the father's forgiveness, and the boy, weary, fell into his father's open arms. The same open arms welcomed him that had welcomed Abraham, Moses, David, and Jonah. No wagging fingers, no clenched fists, no I told you so, no slaps or where have you been, interrogations, no crossed arms, no black eyes or fat lips, no, only sweet open arms. If you ever wonder how God can use you to make a difference in the world, just look at those he has already used and take heart. Look at the forgiveness found in those arms and take courage. And by the way, never were those arms open so wide as they were on the Roman cross, one arm extended back into history and the other reaching into the future. An embrace of forgiveness offered for anyone who will come, a hen gathering her chicks, a father receiving his love of his own, a redeemer redeeming the world. No wonder they call him the Savior. <laughs> and so, um, here it is again. We, uh, uh, we read something that speaks basically of us. Basically, what I just read to you would speak of us. It speaks of me, and I'm sure at the time it speaks of you as well. My mama likes this song, so I'll sing it for her. Sometimes I can see him coming down that road. His strong will now is broken. His head is bowed down low. His father watching for him he's rehearsing what he'll say but on that dusty path expecting wrath he finds a father's grace he could have been my twin coming down that road even that same country beneath that same Everything was wasted, ashamed of where he'd been. The man he was had died, God gave the new one life. He could have been my twin. Going through some photographs just the other day, Mama found an old one. Before I was saved, she said, Son, I can't believe at times that you are the same man. Mom of that man, God died, God gave him life. He could have been my twin. He could have been my twin. Come Even that same country, beneath that same load, everything was wasted, ashamed of where he'd been. The 
many was had died, God gave the new one life, he could have been my twin. Lord, I thank you for having open arms to welcome us back to you, failures as we are. You love us beyond compare. You extend your hand of mercy and grace to us. We love you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks. See you Thursday.